Welcome back to Spy Grower Homestead. I'm Nikki and today I'm going to show you how to cut up a full rabbit. So one of the big complaints that I get a lot from people is what do I do with this rabbit? Uh, a lot of people will butcher them, package them whole, and then they get it and then what? So just like a whole chicken, you can roast it, grill it, all that fun stuff. Um, but you're going to get a whole lot more versatility if you can part this thing out. So there's a whole lot of different cuts. Let's just start with the traditional, and this, that's what we'll do for this, uh, this video. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do the, what is considered the classic six-part um, six cut on a rabbit. Um, now, it's kind of misleading because there's more... You actually end up with a, uh, what we call six and some bonuses. But basically, you're going to start with the rabbit um, laid on its side. And the first thing we're going to do is take off the front legs. So when you you kind of grasp it in like what I'm going to call the armpit area and kind of pull it up, you can see that top bone emerge. And then just run your knife. You want to be flat to the rib cage. The reason this is called the, the classic six is it, traditionally you end up with six parts that you use for things like buttermilk fried and the rest. Um, this is also a good good cut to have for a freezer item. So there you go. That is your front leg. And this rabbit we're using is kind of big, but um, we'll set that kind of aside. Now you flip it over and you're going to do the same thing. Kind of pull it up. And there you go. Now the next thing you do is you take the back legs off. So you're gonna roll the rabbit onto the back, spread the legs. I like to put my fingers kind of up here on this tail section and pop out. You'll hear it pop. That just kind of helps get the, um, the bone separated. You're gonna take your knife and you put it between the little tail part and where the leg goes. There's actually a little groove right there. When you get to about here, you'll hear a bone and pop, put it back in there, and you might have to do it again to try and get around that bone, and then come back under the end, other side, and there you go. So there's your rear leg, that's part three. Oops. Now on this one, I like to turn it over to get this side, um, if you haven't done this a lot, it might not be that easy for you, but basically you're just looking to see where you cut there, and you're going to go there again. This one popped when I turned it over. All right, there you go, part four. Okay, now in a classic six cut, we do not use the belly flaps. So you do remove them, and this is what I'm saying about a bonus. You can kind of see at the end where you're going, You'll come back, you'll see the end of that rib, and then turn, follow the edge of the ribs all the way out, and you'll end up with kind of a big triangular half moon type shape there. All right, and then you go ahead and do the other side. All right, remember those are considered bonus pieces. All right, now some people leave this piece on, I don't. So you want to grasp it, and you're going to go until it cracks. And we go ahead and take it off. All right, for this next piece, which we're basically doing is we're separating this saddle area. That's the part that's got the loin. Um, but before you hit the rib cage, and you're going to put your thumbs right about the break, and you're going to pull it over. And sometimes you get it to break in the right vertebra, and sometimes you don't. You're going to put your knife at the end of that rib. And sometimes it takes a little adjustment. you got to kind of figure out exactly where it is. You're cutting the... You, you try not to cut into the bone just because it'll mess up your knife. A little rip. There we go. All right, now there's classic piece number five. All right, so this piece here is basically what's left. Now, um, I go ahead and usually will try and 
and some rabbits you really can't but I'll put a thumb about right there at the top of the rib break the neck over a little bit because I really don't want to especially if you're making buttermilk fried you don't really want this extra neck piece and you kind of got a feel for it there we go there's the bone there There it goes. Pull it out. And there you go. All right, so some people leave this entirely. This is part six. Some people leave this entirely together and go ahead and uh, batter and fry this. On a big rabbit like this, you can actually take a pair of shears, come down one side of the spine, and cut that piece in half. There is going to be some meat on it, uh, primarily right here along the back. You can take these pieces of fat off if you want. In a younger rabbit, you won't get a lot of that. But like I said, this is a slightly older animal. I went with a bigger animal so it was easier to see on film or on the camera. So you just come through with a pair of shears and you'll take it off right there at the spine and basically make two halves. So by tradition, when you're doing a rabbit, like I said, You'll end up with this big meaty saddle piece. You'll end up with this front. You'll have two rear legs. If I can find the other one. And you'll have two front legs. Now, what about these little fun belly flaps? Um, a lot of rabbit breeders make what's called rabbit bacon with them. They just cut it into really thin slices, fry it up in some bacon grease and eat it. Uh, you can do that. You can also make these jerky. You'll, if you go to make them jerky, make sure to remove any excess fat. Um, like I said, again, younger rabbits won't have it, but these older ones sometimes do, particularly at the base. Uh, they do make pretty good dog treats. Um, that's what I usually will dry mine out for. They're a little thin for my, for my liking for traditional jerky, but you certainly can. So you'll end up with two of those. And then you'll have this tail piece and this big neck piece. Um, you can toss these if you want. I don't like to waste anything. So these are the kind of pieces that I will throw in a big bag. And once I get a bag of them, they go into a pot to make stock or broth. So they don't get wasted. Um, some people I know will throw them in and do them for soup. Because um, there is some meat on them. Naturally, there's some meat. You'll probably want it on the neck. You might have to take some more fat and blood clots and that kind of stuff out. But um, primarily broth is what I do with them. But waste not, want not. I just set them aside, put them in a bag marked end pieces. And uh, yeah, there you go. All right, so there you go. That is how you take a full rabbit down to just um, six or seven parts plus some bonuses. Um, I hope that was helpful. If you have questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll probably do another one of these and sh talk about how um, how I do some of mine. Um, every time I cut one of these things, it's a little bit different depending on the needs and what we've got going on. So um, if you've got other questions or um you know, just need some further instruction, feel free to go ahead and send me a message. You can leave it down in the comments, um, email, Instagram, Facebook, all that fun stuff. And uh, that is it this time for Springer Homestead. See you next time. Happy homesteading.